Spyro. Now I can put my friend back together. Hi guys, TreyGamer58 here with some thoughts, opinions, and impressions on the newly released Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I kind of wanted to give this video up sooner, but college has been extremely hectic. I wasn't able to do a 24 hour marathon binge of the entire game 100% on release day, but oh well. I want to preface all of this by saying that this is not a review on the game's own merits. I'm mostly going to be focusing on comparisons and my opinions and whatnot, comparisons to the original. On, on the game's own merits, do I recommend it? Absolutely. It is phenomenally great overall as a video game, but I'm mostly going to see it, uh, explore it in comparison to the originals, especially since I am a huge Spyro fan. Uh, the first video game I ever played was the original Spyro. I mean, the open green plains of Stone Hill reveal to me the infinite possibilities of this medium and the sense of adventure that I would have if I follow it. I don't know why I got super dramatic there. I also want to preface that this is quick look, just pretty much first impressions even though I beat it the entire game 337%. This is not going to be very editing heavy. This is definitely not going to go on any kind of portfolio of my video making prowess. I just want to get my thoughts out there and show off some gameplay. This video is scriptless. I'm mostly just going off of bullet points, so it's going to be quite messy. But anyways, as I said, I'm a huge Spyro fan, so you know I was ecstatic when that teaser dropped. Oh my goodness. But after a few seconds, I became very skeptical. I mean, it sort of looked like one of those like Unreal Engine remakes of Spyro's first level that like like sure it looks nice but uh where's the art direction I mean it just feels bland and whatnot but here there's definitely an evident art direction they're going for that style that was like in the very early Spyro concepts arts which I am fine with but it feels like they're making like some weird changes that like benefit no one like why do the Norts have uh, underbite fangs instead of overbite ones? I don't understand. And also, I was kind of worried about what the rest of the game would look like, or mostly the second and third games. Like, I think this art style would work phenomenally in the first game. But in the second and third game, I feel like the Isomniac realized their potential of graphics by that point. So it didn't really, probably didn't really give any kind of detailed representations of most of the characters and just gave them all Muppet faces. So I was wondering how they're going to tackle that with the art style. So yeah, I was really looking forward to it, but then I became like super unhyped. I lost most of my hype, but like the first few weeks, like before launch, I was getting super angsty, super wanting to play, especially with a bunch of these Kamurons who were not charging all the time to keep that momentum up. Like what the heck, I want to play this game super badly. And now that I played through it, I can say that it surpasses my expectations in many ways, but also down in a few others. Yeah, I, I'm, you, call me a Nick Picky. I was one of the people who was like going, this is the wrong shade of purple. Even though, honestly, Spyro's shade of purple in this game is actually dynamic based on the lighting, which I find super awesome, like going from OG Dark to the Legend of Spyro light. I think they did good. I would probably insert a purple slider if I was a producer, but they did good. 
So yeah, I was worried about the art style and graphics and whatnot, but I also got worried as when I noticed they were messing with the color palettes and skyboxes in some levels. Like, the originals paid close attention to color theory and had great atmosphere because of it, but when I play through the game, the graphics are consistent and good. When I play through the game, everything felt like it was like how it was supposed to be, so I'm very glad for that. I, as said, I feel like they made a few dumb design decisions when it comes to some characters, enemies, and environments, like as I said with the Norks, but like some things like, like these billows aren't even billows, why are you even calling them billows, like what the heck, it's so dumb. And also, I kind of foresaw this one coming, but what's going on in Twilight Harbor? Like I know you want to avoid angry moms on the phones going like, why the heck are them child killing AR-15s in my child's game, you freaking gang ad hominem? So I kind of understand that, but why y'all replace it all with freaking goose? What is this, Splatoon now? Like, what the heck? Give me my Dorito guns back! <laughs> it's like some guns are censored, but it's like some others like definitely aren't. But, but whatever, whatever. I think one thing, one aspect of his game that absolutely everyone was skeptical about was the soundtrack. The original's OST by Stuart Copeland is like the most iconic part of the original Spyro trilogy. And when they showed some clips, some uh, music bits, uh, where's the bass? Why are the instruments rather plain and whatnot? I don't know. Like. Are you like trying to muffle the identity of the original Spyro? Or I don't know, it just didn't feel that well. But I feel, I don't know if they changed anything or it's just me turning the bass up all the way on my speakers, but I feel like the new soundtrack is fine. I don't think it's as good as many people are saying. I think it's fine. I don't think it's better than the original. Heck, if you want to, you can play the original soundtrack. I'm glad that's an option, but the best thing about the new soundtrack is the dynamic option. Awesome, I like it. I like the dynamic soundtrack. So yeah, I think the new soundtrack is palatable and actually complements the new art direction and whatnot very well. The only track that I would say is downright trash is Crush's theme. Like, what the heck did they do? What the heck did they do to the atmosphere of this entire boss fight in general? Like, I don't know. The voice acting, I have similar opinions. Like, I feel like it's objectively better. The cutscenes, the animation in the cutscenes is great, but I don't know. Like, the voice acting just irks me in the wrong way. Way more than any other design decision in this game has. It's mostly in the delivery, not the voices themselves. I think the voice actors did a good job and, like, everything and whatnot, but I feel like there's, like, some bad and boring changes to like the personalities and whatnot it's like it's like super uncanny especially if you've seen the uh, original cutscenes and watched them a bunch of times like i have sergeant bird 9068 awaiting orders sir uh i think you'll have to find your commanding officer for that hey what are those things Sergeant Bird, 90068. Awaiting orders, sir. Um, I think you'll have to find your commanding officer for that. Hey, what are those things? Say, where'd you come from? I thought dragons had all been dead for a thousand years or something. Well, the rumors of our extinction were slightly exaggerated. We just wanted a little peace and quiet. Say, where'd you come from? I thought dragons had all been dead for a thousand years or something. Well, the rumors of our extinction were slightly exaggerated. We just wanted a little peace and quiet. There's different emphasi emphasis, emphasis, <laughs> and uh, like the nuances are different. It's just uncanny. I don't like it. Spyro lost a lot of his sass and became more bland, in my opinion. I think some of his delivery and some lines are like flat. I think the cutscenes are overall better, but it's like, uh, heck, some changes in the cutscenes themselves just are dumb and like kill some of the jokes. I could nitpick some of those changes like infinitely, but I feel like the cutscenes are all right. I hate with those designs. Get that off my screen. But I also think some other changes are really cool. Like Alora, just like her character in general is just really great. And of course, like 
my favorite thing has to be but in Spyro 3, like the other characters you play as in the cutscenes before the bosses, they have like a lot more involvement. Awesome. I like that. Personally, I feel like Year of a Dragon fundamentally has a lot of issues that I know Toys for Bob are not going to be able to fix doing a one-to-one -one remake, but actually they, they kind of do. I'll get to that when I get to gameplay and whatnot later on. When it comes to animation, the dragons in the first games, oh my gosh, it's phenomenal, but uh, double-edged sword, <laughs> but like, you can tell they rushed two and three, two to some point, definitely three, especially with the baby dragons, definitely different bar in quality, like, oh my gosh. So what was I saying earlier? Oh yeah, the gameplay. The gameplay is perfect. The controls are nice. They feel familiar and are even tighter and more consistent throughout the games. They feel better, but there's also some changes. I think some are weird. A couple are dumb and some are great. For the weird, you bump into walls when you glide now. And also, if you charge near a wall, you like automatically readjust. The ice skating is dumb, like you have this constant forward momentum. I know that's how it was in Spyro 2, but in Spyro 3 they got rid of that, so I don't know why they uh, kept it here. There's two control schemes, mostly affecting the uh, the shoulder buttons. There's retro and there's retro and reignited, if I remember correctly. And I went with retro because the uh, even though you don't need to, because the right stick, the right stick to move camera is a godsend. I mean kind of obvious in every platform or 3D platformer, but it's like the originals didn't have that. You moved the camera with the shoulders buttons and if you're smart you would try to use the look button triangle to center camera, which one dumb thing about this game is that you can't do that anymore. You're like I know in the new control scheme there's a dedicated center camera button being L2, but it's like like, when you press look, the action button, it's like, I know, you're supposed to look around, and I'm glad you can do it in 360 this time, but, um... But here, instead of holding it, it toggles, so if you go to press at the center of a camera, it's just going to... You have to, like, press it twice, and it's so dumb, that's, and there's no option to change it, so that's dumb. Also, if you press down on the right control stick, it does the same... You'd think that would just center camera, but it does the same thing as look. I wish I was... Toggle, toggleable too, especially if you go to retro controls, I feel like they should have, I, I don't know. The main reason why I went to retro controls instead of just keeping with a new one is that one thing that just weirded me out was that R2 was to attack, like the fire, and it's like, what the heck? I mean, this ain't a first person shooter, but when you get the Spyro 3, you definitely want R2 to fire because it makes a world of difference, especially when you're playing as Agent 9 and also in some vehicles. Anyway, some cool additions is the fact you can roll in all the games instead of just Spyro 1. And also, if you press down on the left control stick, sparks will point towards the nearest gym. Thank goodness! I wish this was a... Th like, yeah, actually it was a thing in Spyro 3 if you got all the sparks upgrades, but... Oh my gosh, in the original games, especially when I revisit them and revisit them and try to completely 100% them, you know, spend an, half an hour culling through the level multiple times just trying to find a handful of gems that are snuck behind some bullcrap corner. I am glad for this change. I am, I will, I have no shame. I welcome it with both arms. So yeah, as said, the R2 to fire makes Agent 9 so so much better to play as. When it comes to the side characters of Spyro 3 or the other playable characters, um, I feel like uh, Sheila goes too slow. Bentley is supposed to be slow. I wish he was faster, but I feel like they both should have had some kind of speed boost. But Agent 9 had like, also Surgeon Bird had like the most improvements. Like Surgeon Bird, well his gameplay is pretty much similar, but his rockets home in. I don't remember if they did that in the original, but they home in a lot more and it's definitely better. But Agent 9, in the original games, he feels like crap to control, but I remember liking it a lot as a kid, but oh my gosh, revisiting it, it's like awful, but here, it feels like a regular third person shooter with the R2 fire. It is great. I don't know why they had to change up the control scheme a lot, like to retro, like I know to have R2 fire, but can't that just be like, context sensitive to missions and vehicles and whatnot, I don't know. But yeah, in missions, I feel like 
they made some of the infamous bullcrap challenges a lot easier. I mean, there's still some awful ones that will torture a new generation, but some of the awful ones, like the popcorn rock ones, I was able to do that on my first try. I don't know if that's because I'm an epic gamer or if they actually made it easier or whatnot, but I can't confirm, but I don't, I don't know. A couple of more things I want to mention is that what's up with the title screen? It's so boring. Remember the originals where like the title screens had like these awesome dioramas and whatnot? I, it was, that was like one of the coolest parts about the game. Great first impression, but here it's just stupid. I'm guessing this is because they ran out of time, but I really hope they planned for something, but uh, oh well. One addition that I really like is the fact that there is a mini-map you can turn on. I didn't have it on because I wanted to like see all the visuals like when the HUD goes away, I really like that, but this was a thing in Spyro 2, and they implemented it in all the games. Thank you. That was something I wanted, and I might keep it on while my next playthrough if I ever do so. One thing that I wish was an option in menus is to turn off this freaking motion blur. I'm not heavily against motion blur like some people are. Like, if it's an option, I would just have it to like the lowest setting. I think some of it's kind of cool and keep things from being feeling like too sharp. If you know what I mean, I'll probably talk about it more in the future. But here, it's not too invasive, but in some of the more fast parts, it gets sickening and distracting and turns everything to mush. And if you suffer motion sickness, I feel sorry for you. I don't know why you can't turn it off. Like this game, it looks great. It runs at a steady 30 FPS. I wish 60, but oh well. But wouldn't like turning off the motion blur increase performance or is that not true? I don't, I don't know the uh, technical side of that, but let's just say I wish it wasn't as intense as it was. So yeah, overall, my opinions on this game, especially in comparison to the originals, I was going to go into it thinking that I would still prefer to play the originals in this remake, but honestly, especially with the gameplay, the new controls, especially with the right stick camera movement, I think I can't even go back to the originals because sure, I have some gripes with some design decisions, especially with character designs and whatnot, but it's like, the game plays extremely well. I love it. I feel like this is a worthy remake. I feel like there's a few hicks and, well, they're mostly just personal grudges. But overall, this is a phenomenal remake and the fact that it's for 40 bucks, I absolutely recommend it. I mean, 40 bucks for a remake for a good and beautiful remake of these three solid video games for only for 40 bucks, definitely go out and buy it. When it comes to game length, this could be like 9 to 15 hours if you're going for everything, and that's if you kind of know what you're doing. I feel like Crash Insane Trilogy is better as a remake, because I feel like that's kind of perfect in art direction and everything and whatnot. I, I think there was a lot more to uh, interpret and have artistic liberties with, with Spyro and it's graphic and I also feel like as said probably could use more time in the oven but I'm pretty sure they wanted to release in 2018 20 years of Spyro you know yeah this game can like get is very unpolished it can get really glitchy it gets more unpolished the more you go into it like kind of, that's kind of similar to like the original games that got they got more and more unpolished as they went along but it kind of reminds me of Mario Odyssey except even less stable like it works perfectly, but when you start pushing things, it just all starts to break down. I think one awful glitch is the fact that sometimes sparks won't pick up gems like that. Ugh. But yeah, overall, I definitely recommend Spyro's remake. Even over the originals to an extent. Mostly in the gameplay department. Gameplay is definitely better than the originals. The art direction and whatnot and reinterpretations are... I have some personal grudges, personal irks, but overall, I say again, definitely recommend, and it's and it's worth way above its price point, so definitely a good deal. Get this for your kids, get this for you, get this for everyone in your family. I am super surprised and super happy that it's doing so well. But yeah, I, I really need to stop rambling, I'm, I, my voice is starting to crack more and more. 
So yeah, thank you to listen to my incoherent, scriptless bubbling, and hopefully I'll get you a nice, clean, edited video in the winter when I have less crap to do. So until next time, subscribe or whatnot, like, whatever, I don't know. I will see y'all next time, so see ya.